Good morning, first and second graders. It's Thumbs Up Thursday. I'm interested in how you're doing on your math facts when you get to your combination video today. Are you faster than the kids on the video or still working on it? I've enjoyed FaceTiming with several of you this week to practice some math facts and to read together, especially the second graders. First graders, if you have time to read with me, have mom and dad send me a text and we'll turn on FaceTime and read together any day. Well, let's get started with our books of the Old Testament. I think you're getting so good at saying them all by yourself that we're going to try a little challenge today. And we're not going to start on Genesis. We're going to skip a few books and see if we can start there and take it to the end of the Old Testament. Let's start with Proverbs. <gasps> what comes next? Proverbs. Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. We didn't say all 39 today. We just started in Proverbs and went from there. And I bet you did a great job keeping up with me. Yesterday we found a verse from the book of First Samuel. A great verse from the story of David and Goliath. Let's turn to the next book, 2 Samuel, and look for chapter 9, verse 13. This is a great story about kindness. 2 Samuel 9, 13. Pause the video till you find it, and then turn it back on. Okay, 2 Samuel 9, 13. Let's read it together. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem... For he did eat continually at the king's table, and was lame on both his feet. Have you ever heard of Mephibosheth before? Boy, can you imagine writing that name on your paper every morning? That's a long name. Mephibosheth was supposed to have been a king. He was related to King Saul. And after King Saul and his son died in battle, the next relative should have taken over the kingdom but because of Saul's sin God took the kingdom away from King Saul's family and he gave it to David and when David became king if he'd been like everybody else he would have hunted down anybody else from Saul's family to make sure they would never come take over the kingdom well David did send some um, servants to go find relatives from Saul's family but not because he wanted to kill them or put them in prison, but because he'd made a promise to his best friend Jonathan, King Saul's son, he promised if anything ever happened to Jonathan, David promised to take care of all of his family. He sent a servant to find any relative of King Saul, and they found Mephibosheth. He was hiding because he didn't want to be hurt by the king, and he had been hurt when he was a little boy. He'd been hurt so that he couldn't walk anymore. And when King David found Mephibosheth, because his servants found him, and brought them to the palace, Mephibosheth was really nervous. What's going to happen to me? But King David remembered his promise to Jonathan, Prince Jonathan, and he took care of Mephibosheth. He gave him land, and he gave him a place at his table to come and eat dinner with him every day. He took care of him. He kept his promise. He showed great kindness. Mephibosheth didn't try to take over the kingdom. He was thankful for David's um, mercy, and he was thankful for David's kindness, and he enjoyed the privilege of eating at the king's table every day. There it is in 2 Samuel 9.13. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet because he'd been hurt when he was a little boy. That is a great verse about kindness. We can show kindness to others. And David, remember to keep his promise. Do you keep your promises? Well, yesterday was a fun day in health class, wasn't it? You got to learn some new exercises, great exercises to do during these funny days of snow and rain and icky weather outside where we don't get to ride our bikes and run and play. We can do the lion walk inside or the kangaroo hop or the duck waddle or the inchworm crawl, or the giraffe neck stretch, or the camel hump curve. Oh, that one sounds comfortable. It helps stretch your back when you've been sitting a long time doing schoolwork. 
or the dog leg stretch, or the frog leap. Oh, that one uses lots of energy. I hope you got to try them out, and maybe you can use them today when you need a stretch break. If you can't remember how to do them, just open your health book and find the instructions again. I have a story to share with you from last week's packets. It's, uh, this one was written by Kendrick, and he wrote some instructions for how to make a sand castle in his writing class. He says, step one, get your stuff ready. Get your shovels and bucket ready. Step two, get the wet sand in the bucket using your shovels and flip it over. Step three, do it again and again. Step four, now you decorate it with seashells. Step five, you can get some toys and play with your oops, sand castle. And I hope you enjoy it from Kendrick. Boy, if I had some sand that wasn't too snowy, I think I'd go make a sand castle. I'd make a lot of them because it said to fill the bucket and do it again and again and again. Where would I find some seashells here in Colorado? Hmm. Well, maybe I'll have to wait till I go to the beach someday. Thank you, Kendrick, for doing a beautiful job with your cursive and making nice, clear sentences so I could understand the directions of how to make a sand castle. How about you, first graders? In your writing lessons this week and last week, so I should be able to see these in your new packets coming back to me tomorrow, I should get to read about butterflies. I should get to read some sentences about some outdoor adventures like riding your bike, going swimming. Ooh, today is a new one. I'm curious if anyone has even done the one you're gonna write about today or if you'll have to use your imagination. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. You wait till you get to writing class with Mrs. Miss Howe, and she'll tell you about it, and I'll be looking forward to reading about it in your next packet when you bring it back to me. Well, it's time to get busy, and it's Thumbs Up Thursday, so I hope to see a picture at the end of the day of who's faster than the ones on the video. Have a great day, and I'll see you later.